To come at this 11 o'clock worship service today. We've had, we've had quite a morning already here. Uh, so we are thrilled on this Memorial Weekend that you uh, came out. Uh, as you can see, uh, the roof being off of our uh, roof came at an inopportune time. And uh, all this was done during the 8 o'clock worship service because that's when it all happened. So we, uh, so we had an interesting 8 o'clock worship. Uh, we protected our furniture. And then we had to move all the contemporary worship for the 9.30 out. And so they did an acoustic set. So they were very flexible. And there's nothing that can go wrong for you people. We have um, the other thing that's going on here that is unrelated to the roof is these lights have gone on and off for the last uh, three, four months. Uh, <clears throat> feels like there's something going on with, with one of these that they've identified and they got a cherry picker uh, that, they've, that they've figured out how to get up here and they are going to repair that and so that doesn't happen. It will likely come back on on its own because there's a ballast loose or something like that. So that's what's happening in the back here. Initially, before we thought all this rain, we were just going to have you sit in the front half and, and when, that, when that was our only problem. But now, now that's the least of our problems. So, so hopefully you can see well enough to uh, participate. And with that, why don't we uh, begin with our first hymn.
We are still in the season of Easter, uh, which is a good thing. So that means we have our Easter greeting. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing this canticle of praise. pray. Holy God, land in the space with your spirit and give us the word that may make a home within our hearts so we can share that word abundantly with your world hungry to hear it. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have our um, children. Yeah, is Betsy taking the children? Oh, that's that what you're whispering? So I wouldn't do that. We're going to have our scripture read, Fred. <laughs> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Tros and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. Remain, we remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Theatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her house was, were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelations. And in the spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, 
but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as we prepare for our gospel. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Please pray with me. God, we give you thanks in this place, through all circumstances, that you are God, you are worthy of our praise, you are here present with us, present in our encounters with one another. Let your spirit move through this place. Show us what you have for us. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm looking at the Acts story today mostly, and and it started with thinking about how did Paul get here, right, on this riverbank? This is the the encounter we see happen with him. How did he get here to this riverbank? We heard a few weeks ago the story of of his conversion from Saul to Paul, where he was once uh, persecuting the early church, the followers of the way, believing he was in the right, until Christ stops him dead in his tracks in the road to Damascus, blinds him, and says to him, why, oh, why are you persecuting me? And it changes his entire trajectory what he's been doing. He starts to preach and teach Christ to all, starting first at the synagogues and moving to the people who are Gentiles. And so that's sort of where we're catching up with him, where he's been traveling and preaching, traveling and preaching. And right before this story, we didn't read this part, but right before it, 
He tries to head off to the province of Asia, and it says that the Spirit stopped him. The Spirit prevents him from going. And then, so he tries to go to a different province. He tries to head off in a different direction. And then again, the scripture says, but the Spirit prevented him. We don't really know how that all came out. You know, how does he know? But somehow he knows the Spirit has said, no, you are not to go this way or that way. And here he is wondering, but I'm meant to travel and to preach and to keep going. This is my calling. Where am I to go? And he receives a vision, a vision of a man from Macedonia that says, please come help us. But here the story even has another surprising turn because he he knows from this vision okay the spirit's sending me to macedonia and the next thing we read is that it's not that he comes and finds the man who came to him in the vision it's a story of him finding a woman on the riverbank lydia their encounter How did Lydia get here? How did Lydia wind up at this riverbank? That would be maybe the next question, all right? We know how Paul has wound up there. How is Lydia there? And we get some some kind of clues and details about who this woman is. She's a successful businesswoman. I would say she's a successful businesswoman in a man's world, right? We've talked before. And she's a dealer of purple cloth, which is is a significant hint at what she does. Purple cloth is the most expensive cloth. Purple was the hardest dye to come by. So only the upper, upper class, the royalty, would be buying purple cloth. So that's who she deals with in her business. We know that she's the head of a household, which may have been unusual. Maybe because her wealth makes her independent in that way. And here she is, a Gentile, at the riverbank. The text also tells us she's a worshiper of God. And that's significant. That's the kind of title given to Gentiles who are attracted and moving towards the Jewish faith. Jewish tradition. There were Gentiles who were, who were curious about this, interested, who, who were seekers, who sought to, to learn more and to follow this God of Israel, God of Abraham and Isaac. The synagogue was set up in a way where Gentiles could come to the outer rings to participate in a limited way with the faith. So she's a worshiper of God which means that she rejected and turned away from the gods and goddesses of the Roman Empire. It's no small thing, amen? You can use your imagination. You know, the gods and goddesses of Rome, they were a part of everything. Temples were littered everywhere. They were a part of the economics of the area. So for her to be doing business with upper class in this this culture, and then to reject the cults, the religion around there, it was no small thing. To say, I'm going to follow this God of Israel, though I am a Gentile. How did Lydia get here on this riverbank? I imagine that the Spirit has been moving in her life long before Paul ever showed up. Amen? She has been responding to the Word as she saw it, seeking it out as she could hear it, long before Paul showed up. It has meant doing some real actions, changing some ways in her life, 
keeping the word before she understood it all. Lydia and Paul, they are prepared in very different ways for this encounter they have at the riverbank. They have responded to the Spirit in however they can see or hear the Spirit moving. They have kept the Word as best as they could see. In the Gospel today, we hear Jesus tell his disciples, those who love me, keep the Word. Keep my Word. And the Father and I will make a home. Keeping the Word. I look at Lydia and I look at Paul and I think keeping the Word is so often about keeping the Word as best as we can see it right now. Amen? You know, we don't see it all. Do you all see it all? You get all of it? Keeping the Word is, see, is doing what we see now today so that it opens us up to receive more, more understanding. Lydia kept the word as best she could until she found Paul and Paul opened it even further out to her. And I imagine from then on there was more that she received and gained and learned and grew from. Keeping the word is always keeping the word as best as we see it because in the keeping we will be prepared for the next step. Last week, we talked about Peter. You know, Peter, he was keeping the word when he believed that Jewish tradition and laws were meant to be kept even by the Gentiles. Until the Spirit showed up and said, you need to take down all your fences, barriers, and walls, divisions, whatever. I have more for you. More for you to understand. Paul believed he was keeping the word when he began to persecute the early followers of Jesus until Christ disrupted him and said, no, I have another way for you. Keeping the word looks different. Lydia was keeping the word as best as she could see it when she turned from the gods and goddesses and began to follow this God of Israel even though she was a Gentile. Keep the word. And in keeping it, it prepared each one of them for the next step, for the next thing God had for them, for the next word God gave them. What is the word that you are being called to keep and that is preparing you for the next step God has for you. What is the word you are being called to keep and that is preparing you for the next thing God has for you? God will show you more. Keep my word. This morning for me, it was looking out at 8 o'clock service, seeing folks' heads start looking up as rain starts coming down on them. Then a mad rush as the 8 o'clock service started moving over where you all are now. And then the mad rush of, of garbage bags and, and, and buckets to put out here. And keeping the word was, was finding that we worship God in every circumstance. Amen? I have to tell you, you missed out on some real joy <laughs> of walking down this aisle with drips on my head as we sang, Alleluia, Christ is risen and we will arise. There was real joy as I stood over here at the 9.30 service and the band was all crowded here singing, Holy Spirit, rain down on me. <laughs> you 
know what? I was like, Lord, what are you trying to say to us? Because you just messed up the whole morning. You disrupted our worship. We got rain in the sanctuary. Or not. Maybe the disruption is what we needed. Maybe the keeping of the word was to find ourselves giving thanks in all circumstances, receiving joy and peace in the midst of stress and panic. Maybe God was saying, I'm going to give you a whole lot of distractions so that all you can do is focus on me. Amen? Because you can't fix the roof. Not today, anyway. What is the word you are being called to keep right now as far as you can see it? Because in the keeping of it, it will prepare you for the next thing to see, and it will surprise you. For Jesus, he tells the disciples, love one another. This is my word. This is my commandment. And I've found that I usually think I'm all about keeping that word of love until I encounter someone I don't want to love. Amen? And that's when it really becomes, are you going to keep my word or not? And when we do, we see something even truer, more beautiful. Often we see the person we despise or objectify as the human God created. Keep my word. What is the word you are being called to keep? Because the Spirit is preparing you. Like Paul, it may be the Spirit telling you no. No. You will not go that way or that way, even though it sounds really good and it sounds like it's what I'm calling you today. No. Maybe like Lydia, the Spirit is telling you to turn away from idols that you have placed at the center of your life, the things you have put before God eating up your time, your attitudes, your thoughts. Maybe like Paul, the Spirit is calling you to go, sending you out to others in love. Maybe like Lydia, the Spirit is revealing to you in a new way who Christ is. We keep the word as best as we can see it today. And it prepares us to see more. So how did you get here this morning? It wasn't just your alarm clock. What did you walk in with this morning? Not expecting garbage bags in the sanctuary. What burdens and struggles and fears and anxieties? What things have you left unreconciled, unforgiven? How is the Spirit calling you to keep the word that you see today so that you are prepared for the next thing. Because in that preparation, God comes and makes a home with us, among us. Because the building is not the church. It is us. Amen.
invite you to stand. We're going to join together in this hymn, Because He Lives. It's an insert in your bulletin, and the men are going to help lead us in this song. Let us pray. <laughs> Holy God, 
with you, uh, we face many things, much tougher than this crisis this morning. God, I thank you for the opportunity you've given us to worship in the midst of crazy circumstances. The gift of knowing your presence meets us wherever we are, through whatever we face. Creator of sunshine and rain, giver of life in the midst of struggle. We pray that you would continue to meet us in our encounters with one another and with those outside these walls. Send us out to riverbanks and sidewalks and corners to encounter you, to see more clearly your word and how we are to keep it to love one another. We pray today for those who are grieving. We lift up especially families who are grieving those who have been lost to war. God, comfort. We pray for the places in our world that are experiencing violence and war today, for the lives lost today. Make us peacemakers. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction and depression illness. We pray especially for Kimberly Beery, Meg Reidler, Susan Franklin, Lauren Blake, Holly Hessler, Julie Searles, Karen Butler, Amanda Patterson, Jennifer Solt, Roberta Hammond, Matt Kelly, Cody Desso, Steve Stout, Susie Klee, Deborah Zardinskas, Paul Newell, Madison Epperly, Andrew Bailey, Tish Roberts. We pray for the protection and safety of those who are working on our roof. May you guide their steps and others we name in this moment. Lord, in your mercy. God, we entrust all these things to you, knowing that you prepare us for the next step. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. from our men that we will enjoy while we uh, receive the good gifts you brought for God's kingdom this morning.
all these good gifts and stand up and sing. Holy God, we've brought forward bread and wine and wealth as a sign of our love for you. Bless them, Lord, and give us wisdom as we use them in your world to share the abundance we've received from you, first from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. With all the saints we sing this unending hymn.
became incarnate and was made flesh among us. And we pray over that word today in bread and wine, where Jesus has promised to be present when we ask and gather. For in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are proclaiming the very mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and unite us to be your people through bread and wine, fellowship and love. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and may we share your word abundantly. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll commune what assistance we have today. And we will ask, um, we're going to just have two stations. There we go. We're just going to have one station, rather. Bread and wine on this side as you come forward.
sing the first verse of this closing hymn. All right, let's sing the